Let's see, I'm trying to see if I can upgrade the dragon sword. I think I have to talk to this guy more. Demon soul? The demons are powerful spirits. Some can even bless weapons. But doing so requires a powerful flame. For the soul of a demon is an inferno of wrath. God, they really figured out the blueprint for the entire series in the first game, didn't they? We need the power. We need some kind of powerful flame in order to be able to upgrade these weapons. It's like, wow, this is familiar. I told you that I am busy. Ichor has a grade. Mighty weapons can only be blessed by ores of high grade. The highest grade of all is a pure ore that shines in utter brilliance. A spirit force that delights the eyes. <laughs> The highest grade of all is a pure old... Uh, don't... Uh, what be your need? If it be a blacksmith, then show me some coin. If not, head straight for the door. The highest grade of all... Still can't do it. I might need to go get the soul and bring it back with me. I might need to have the Flame Lurker soul on me, which I believe is what you need to upgrade. Kinda thought you'd be able to get away with just, you know, having it in your stash, because I believe the items in your inventory... I believe that the items in your stash uh, that are... that are ores work just fine. But I think I have to physically carry one of the, one of the uh, souls to him. Let's see if this old man can be sated. So I've got the colorless demon soul and hot soul on me. Yes, that's the one. The red hot demon soul. Now you can bless your weapon with another demon soul. Hmm, wise choice. You've done well to put your trust in the great blacksmith, Ed. Bring me a demon soul! And I shall use it to bless your weapon. Dragon Bone Smasher! You can make it a plus one weapon, increasing its damage by 15 and increasing its scaling by a fair bit too. That gives it... 25 more damage, including the scaling. Which is pretty fantastic, actually. I'm pretty psyched about that. Oops. It's a monstrously powerful weapon, but it kind of has to be to justify how unwieldy and, un un like, weird it is. I'm kind of thinking of going towards this weapon for the rest of the playthrough because I think it might be entertaining. I'm garbage with Ultra Great Swords. I'm so bad at using them. So I need another Colors Demon Soul to upgrade it again. Well done. Let me go. I'll walk alone. I am terrible with Ultra Great Swords. Which was shown by the fact that uh, I did a Dark Souls 2 playthrough with, with uh, I think it was the Fume Knight Ultra Great Sword. And, uh, if I remember correctly, I had to revert to my rapier or something like that when I fought, like, I think Flint, I think, was it Dark Lurker or something? Or, like, I just, like, I just couldn't, I just couldn't deal. Like, something, like, an enemy was just too fast, and I'm like, God damn it, calm your shit. And it was just a problem. But I got through most of it with it. Uh, it's interesting having such a giant weapon because I learned a lot of things about how the game treats you differently when you fight enemies With a fast weapon versus a slow weapon like a fast weapon is great for boss fights because you can poke them in, get a bunch of little quick attacks in uh, Between all the different attacks that the fa that the weapon that the boss is doing and if that fast weapon is a spear or a rapier then you're getting counter-attack damage, which means that if you're, you're if you're attacking them with your thrusting weapon while the enemy is in the middle of their attack, you actually get a bonus based on uh, them being in mid-attack. It's counted as a counter-attack and as bonus damage. I don't know if that mechanic was even in Dark Souls, uh, Demon Souls. And boy, can I one-shot those guys. So that's nice. That's nice. Oh god, a miss. So I get a kick out of how absurdly powerful this thing is, but I can't roll, and I'm incredibly slow, and it feels wrong. But one of the things I learned really fast during my Scholar of the First Sin playthrough, where I switched from Rapier to Ultra Great Sword, just the most ridiculous extreme possible, is that while fast out, well, fast weapons are great for fighting against bosses, 
and getting attacks in, in between. Uh oh, your enemy's attacks. Oh god. The pro the but you run into a problem when using a uh... slower weapons are hard to get in between the enemy attacks. But what's cool about the slower weapons is actually that they they just obliterate like invasion type NPCs that like move so slow they uh they get flattened and like they can't you where where before you had to worry like oh no my attacks will always lead to me, uh i have to hit and run because i can't interrupt my enemy's behavior i have to avoid them uh and then always be afraid of the recourse uh when you use a big giant weapon you just you stagger the crap out of people usually which is really interesting to have as an optional all of a sudden, because then you're like, oh, I could hit him really hard, and if I... He he has a good chance of getting the hit off first, but if I can hit him hard enough, then he won't be able to... Uh, he won't be able to do anything in return, and he has to worry about avoiding me. There we go. Yeah, there was supposed to be an encounter here, if I come here in, in pure white. Whoa, that thing in... He disappeared instantly! What the hell? Hello. He cats! Oh, oh, you nearly... Frightened me to death, creeping up on me like that. <laughs> My name is Skurva. I s s seek treasures of the unknown. I'm impressed you've come this far. Were you guided by a sixth sense or a brash imprudence? Either way, you've more skill than I. Let us put that s skill to work. There is a t t temple beyond here, below the ground. It is a work of art, molded by the ancient burrowers to appease the bones of, of dragons. As a precaution, a broad sword which can cr crush bone and slay dragon is stored in the temple. Truth told, it is the laughing stock of many a swordsmith. They say it's as blunt as a bludgeon. A d dull blade meant to slay a dragon. C curious, is it not? I would search for it myself, but I I'm afraid I'd fare poorly against the demons. If you happen to come upon the sword, please let me have a look at it. This place is magnificent, eh? The bones of dragons exuding awe. A dream come true. Wonderful. The arts of swordsmanship applied in a perfectly useless manner. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. Oh, do not mind me. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Please, take this as a small show of thanks. Take care of that sword, will you? She's a beauty. Take care of that sword. Go figure. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that chain before. I don't know if I've ever extracted this weapon before. I don't know if I've had it. I don't remember. But I'm curious about upgrading it. He said it. He said it. He called it perfectly useless. I don't know about that. Look at this thing. It ruins people. God damn. I've been. I've been doing some like accidental coincidence things. I just felt like try, I wanted to see if I could get that weapon with pure white. And somebody mentioned that there's an NPC here, but only during pure white, or then something else might happen during pure black. And I also just on a whim upgraded my vitality to 25, endurance to 25, and strength to 20 to 30, which turned out to be the requirement for this weapon. That wasn't planned. That was just a coincidence that when it, when that, that that happened that way. Huh. Go figure. Now it's just, it's a staggering damage. Ah, the problem. Is that you need colorless demon souls. Oopsie. I was trying to put my controller down so I could re reference something real quick. Uh, I don't remember where I got my... Ooh, there's a large sword of searching. Oh, that's... I believe that's the weapon that the hero demon was using. Okay, so if you use the old hero... If you get a plus eight claw, broadsword, flamberge, shotal, scimitar, falcoin, kilij... Uchikatana or War Scythe, you get any of those to plus eight, you can actually use the hero demon, uh, the uh, old hero's like demon soul to make the sword that he had. That's just an aside. I wasn't really looking for that, but I accidentally clicked on something. So you need colorless, colorless demon souls, and I've never really gone down this rabbit hole of how to get these, basically. But my understanding is that every there's supposed to be a primeval demon in every realm. 
and it only happened it only appears once and you need to get e you need to get each of the worlds like this world tendency screen you need to get each of these to pure black or nearly pure black then something called a primeval demon spawns which uh, I honestly don't even know what it looks like to be honest uh, it always looks like a weird fleshy thing and I've never gotten a good look at it I think it just is like yeah, I'm looking at it, images of it now. Yeah, it's just, it's just a weird, like, leech-looking thing with teeth that's like a big blob monster. Uh, you murder the crap out of those. I think one of the, I, th I feel like one of them showed up in, uh, in Dark Souls in the Blight Town, actually. You murder the crap out of those, and they have a chance of maybe dropping a colorless demon's soul. So, if you want to upgrade weapons like this, your tools are not great, honestly. Honestly. Uh, you can do the Mephistopheles Assassin rewards, which we haven't even met that character yet, and uh, he will reward you with a with a Cuddler's Demon Soul two times uh, for two of the st specific murders. And one of the most uh, achievable ways of doing it actually is you go to Sparkly the Crow. You you give a smooth, but for the but for this game, uh, you can trade a gold mask and a talisman of God. I might have both of those. I think I have a Talisman of God. I don't know if I have a gold mask, but I don't even know how to trade in this game. It's always weird. Like, I like the Dark Souls 2 and 3 system where you just put the item down and it instantly transforms into whatever other item. In Dark Souls... In Dark Souls 1, I think you had to, like, put the item down, then, like, log out or leave the zone and come back. Let's look into what this game says. Uh, if the desired item is dropped, the crow will acknowledge it happily. If it doesn't like it, uh, just pick it back up. If the crow likes the item, you start menu to load the current game or return to the Nexus and come back later. The traded item will appear on the right side of the tree, ready to be picked up. That's bizarre. So you have to physically reload the game to make the new item show up. The usual rules apply that we saw from Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 3 where uh, the item, each item can only be traded once. I just, I'm happy that later games got rid of this weird system where you have to reload the game because that's just like some weird arcane stuff that you would only would like know to do by researching how to do it because it's like not intuitive, like no game works that way. Alright, let's give this a shot for the first time. I don't have a gold mask. I think I'll get one in the next part of Tower of Latria. Scary, give Sparky me. Give Twinkly me. Me. You. Trade. Trade. Give me Sparkly Twinkly. Sparkly Twinkly. Where's your nest? Do you have a nest? Or do I just put it on the floor? You. You scary. Sparkly me. me. Sparkly me. Trinkly. I assume it's like right here, I hope. Uh, bu 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 be a weapon, I think. Talisman of God. Drop. Sparkly, happy, happy. I've never done this before, so this is give, this is I'm gonna kick out of this. Uh, so I guess we load our own save. The idea is that you need to reset the environment, but it's easier to load your save to reset the environment. Otherwise, you have to like run in and out. Whereas usually the current list of like alive and not alive people is like stays the same. Is it there? Colorless demon soul. You, scary, sparkly, happy, happy. More trade? Give me, please. They're happy to see us, basically. So the enemies don't respawn, right? Yeah, cool. Alright, so I'm just gonna wander on back. After I kill this dude, and kill him. Oh, I landed on him, it's great. Oh shit. Come here. Yeah. That's satisfying. Alright. I'm gonna head on back and I'm gonna deal with... Trading in my upgrades, I guess. Or actually... You know what, since I'm here... I don't give it a little go. I'm here again, I might as well give it another shot. One of the reasons I don't fight the- one of the reasons I often don't kill this guy is because he's just a pain! He does so much damage, and he takes like... 500 years to hurt. 
It's like my my biggest turnoff is just that he like he does on top of the camera like this just you don't have a really good camera angle generally. I just don't like how like when I hit this guy he doesn't take damage and I'm like oh it's gonna take it forever. But I have an, I have a tough weapon. Maybe this will be decent now. Oh my god, look at me. Look at me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ow. There we go. Got him. Ouch. Gray demon soul. <laughs> Unfortunately, a gray demon soul is not the same thing as a colorless demon soul. So it's not actually a thing I'm after, but hey, I killed him. There we go. Goddamn tutorial dude is dead. He's just not... He's not very fun to fight. He's not nearly as polished of an encounter as the Asylum Demon that shows up in the next game. And you fight him first in the tutorial where you're so underpowered that it's just, it's actively like... Uh, it's like watching paint dry, trying to get, trying to carefully get that fight to work well. Then you fight him here and you're getting shot by projectiles from the manta rays and there's so much debris and awkwardness going on. And it's just like, ah, yeah, I don't like it here either. I don't want to. But hey, if I can do 400 damage a swing, yeah, sure, let's do it. <laughs> don't think there's any description here, right? Yeah, Soul of the Demon Vanguard, it radiates strong power. Might be able to turn that into something at some point. I'm just gonna stash it for now. Alright, BRB, after I get my upgrade done. You've seen it before. Y'all ready to roll some dice? That's a five. No, wait, is that just where I just was? Oh... Oh. Oh. Well, I guess we're going back in. What happens, happens. Alright, so we're going right back into Old Hero. i wrap this place up. Good thing I went through all this work upgrading this weapon so I could just not use it. <laughs> yeah, this is a scenario. Alright, so, just to recap, it's a little more upgraded again. So every time I upgrade this, it goes up by 25 damage between the uh, base damage and the scaling having perfect math for that to just work out that way. So due to the plus 2, it is now at plus 50 damage. Uh, I'm not going to want to use it really though. Also, just so in case, it, just in case no one, just don't want anyone to think I'm lying to them. I swapped out two items in my armor set. I'm wearing the black gloves and black boots. They look the most like they fit the Fluted Knight armor set. I want to keep the the visual setup and the most important parts of the, the chest piece and the helm for maintaining the, the physical appearance of the uh, Fluted Knight armor set. But I did kind of want to have a proper roll because the, the fat roll was... It's, it's hard to go back, man. <laughs> Once you know better, it's real hard to go back. All right, well, time for another gimmick boss fight. You thought Dragon God was the other one. <laughs> no. In fact, almost every age ends in a gimmick. I will say I think they did a better job with this one than the dragon one. This is a cool thing. But yeah, actually, really consistently, the Demon Souls, each world kind of ends in like a weird kind of gimmicky final encounter. Item. 
And this one, the problem is that the enemy, the boss, is flying in the sky. And you're like, how do I fight him? And the answer is actually an answer that they recycled later in Dark Souls 3. Because Dark Souls 3 just used ideas from every previous game, no matter what. Oh god, no. Oh, oh I got him. Neat. Ow. There we go. Yep. The storm ruler. It's here. <laughs> but it, and it does pretty much the same thing that you might remember it doing before. If you saw that part. Ow. Big ouchie. Ow, big ouchie. Get it out. God damn it. I got someone. That was like 3,000 souls. I think it goes through walls, so I think I, I think I can get away with hiding behind stuff a little bit. So many baddies. Oh, these guys are such a pain in the ass to fight. Ah, uh, running, 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 running. They hurt, too. Roll. Ah, motherfucker. Oh my god. <laughs> Your health just melts. Yeah, ouchies. You can't even tell who you're hitting. Like when I do attacks, I can't even tell who I'm attacking. Like I don't see the person that gets hit. I just kind of swing in a direction and it's like, oh, look, I got souls. I guess I hit someone. Uh, I think there's a safe spot up here where you're less likely to take damage. Uh, oh yeah, look at that. Another example. To challenge the storm, you need a sword that can rend the sky. They don't outright tell you what to do, but it's like a Legend of Zelda style little clue about how you might proceed. Is this a safe spot? There's no notes because I'm not playing multiplayer or with online, so I actually don't get the clues. People leave the people leave these nice helpful notes that kind of tell you where the safe spot is, but somewhere around here is like a spot that makes it harder to get hit by things. We're at a range. Maybe not for that guy, though. Got him. Come at me, dude. 1,500 each. Ah, yeah. Oh. Oh. Mothra's here, bitches. And he ain't gonna play kind. Uh-oh. God, he's huge. He's so huge, it's actually hard to process via depth perception how far away he is and where he is. Because he's impossibly large. Oh my god. That was a bad time. Hello. Did I miss every time? There we go. That's better. So he's a problem. Look how long his tail is, oh my god. Big thing is just try to avoid the crazy projectile that shoots everywhere. But also, you gotta get in a range. I'm not, I'm not sure if the manta rays respawn. I think that when you kill them, they might go away. You dick. I hope they go away, because there's so many of them. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, this weapon is very gimped if you take it out of this boss chamber. I think it might give you some kind of shockwave, but I think it's a way shittier shockwave and the shockwave costs, I don't know, durability or something. I'm gonna keep my health up. Ow, for that reason. Oh my god, <laughs> where are they coming from? <laughs> What what is your hitbox? I'm honestly not entirely sure. All right, look how long the tail is. 
It's kind of like ragdolly physics-y, but it's just like it trails hundreds of feet behind him because he's this impossibly large mega boss. Uh oh, that was damn it. It's really it's such a bummer to take a hit and then realize that well, I also missed, so it wasn't even good. For, I didn't even do it for good reason. Ah. Uh, oh, hey, you can kind of redirect at the last second. Neat. There we go. Yeah, being able to change your aiming direction at the last second is actually really helpful for making sure you get a hit in. Oh my god. I'm sorry, they can turn corners? I didn't realize that. Uh, close the gap. One more hit. Now he moves faster than I do, doesn't he? Ow. I couldn't even get both of them. Oh, man. Oh, man. I missed. Here it comes again. I think I'm safe. There we go. Then there, yeah, all the other, all the additional ads all fall and die. A really cool fight. Storm Ruler, a legendary large sword with a thorny blade, named for the one who calms storms. It is said that the ancestors of the Shadow Men rendered the storms and clouds in the sky with it. Now abandoned, with much of its power lost, it is an average large sword, however, if it is used in the monolith forest where ancestral spirits slumber, you may be able to reawaken its ancient power to rend the sky. But now it's gonna suck, because the boss fight's over. So it's not really gonna be useful outside of there. Can I break you? Clearly an item in there. Are you another world tendency thing? Is that what we're doing here? Probably another world tendency. Oh no, that's where it is. Okay. Holy arrows, that's uh, fine, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so this is the Shrine of Storms down. Oh, there's the actual thing. Holy crap, 58,000. They gave me souls for that one. Oh, there we go. Stone of Ephemeral Eyes. Haven't had to use those so much. Happy to say that. Ooh, something down here too. Chunk of cloud stone. And Shrine of Storms is looking pretty pure white at the moment with that top corner icon, but I'm a, I'm a bad judge. It feels like it's it's glowing just as much as Stonefang Tunnel, which is pure white. Or it might be... Nah, I don't know. It might be glowing as much as Tower of Latria. I'm really bad. I can't tell, man. It's just not a great way of explaining that... Like, with the, sli with the sliding scale that it has and, like, the specificity. Like, if you look up online, it tells you, like, the exact uh, scores you need for light and darkness to get certain things to happen. And, like, there's a specificity to that level, but... The actual vis visual representation you get in the game, that's the only way to really tell without mastering the system and knowing exactly what goes where, uh, is that... Not ideal. Let's say that beating that boss did give me... Uh, let's say that giving the boss gave me pure white. If it did, I'm curious to see if maybe the Sparkly the Crow trick works. Where reloading the the uh, setting causes the bird trade to happen, so I'm kind of wondering if that might cause uh, environmental effects to change, but you might have to leave and come back. Not sure. Whoa. They kick you out. 
Oh no. They're all back. It's fine. I can just grab the archstone and teleport out. Let's let's just see if the door. Wait, no, that's not a. I'm sorry, I did a stupid. I already went around behind it. That's probably not any tendency event of any kind. That's a bad test. Oh well, get these guys. Apparently, these guys will respawn, which is a surprise. Hard to get both of them though when they run off like that. Good to know. So I could load here over and over again to kill those those guys if I want to, but they draw they drop a type of stone I didn't need. Why did I think reloading was going to make that go away? Of course it's not a, a tendency event. I just confirmed that. What's wrong with you? It's fine. I think I got, I got distracted by the discussion of like, is it? Has the tendency changed? I can't tell. And I was so curious about that. I kind of forgot where we were going for a bit. Alright, so. World 2 is done. World 4 doesn't exist. World 5 is done. So we're down to worlds 1, 3, and 6. We can That means we can simplify the dice a little bit. So let's say if I roll a 1 or 2, it's 1. If I roll a 3 or 4, then it's 3. And if I roll a 5 or 6, then it's 6. Because that's just, you know, the three locations that are left. So the adjacent place will just take me go, make me go there. Uh, this is a lot of... This is a lot of detail going into a system that is, uh... Completely off camera for you guys, but for all for all you know, I'm just freaking knocking on my desk and like, yo, I rolled the dice. Whoa. But uh, I don't know. I'm enjoying this system at least. Let's get me some levels, especially now that strength gives me some actual damage now. Because I'm all in on this, apparently. Or more levels? Oh my god. Uh, I think it might be like six more damage or something like that. I should have checked the exact number beforehand so I could reference something. The important thing is it's getting higher. All right. Damn. Can I talk to you, please? Can I, can I, can I talk to you, please? There we go. Your hitbox got weird. His, his, hit, his hitbox gets strange when he's got a weird neighbor... When she, when she decides to live right here for a bit, suddenly he has like a shrunken hitbox where you have to rub up on his face. I've noticed that a few times. Alright, next, next episode, next dice roll.